Analysis for something like a fictional language can seem pretty dry, but I assure you it isn't. Statistical analysis can tell us a story about the text, including whether or not it contains real-world text patterns, or is simply random text. In part one, we looked at the major inspirations behind the runes. This time we're going to dig into how we can analyze the rune text. To get started with analysis, we first need to convert segments of rune text back into something we can analyze it with. It's rather simple. For each rune, we assign a letter of the alphabet. Then, we examine rune segments and turn each rune into the letter we assigned it. This gives us ciphertext, and it enables us to use various analysis tools to understand it. To demonstrate, I've taken the runes from the first mural, originally displayed in the October 2022 trailer, and I've converted it into ciphertext. This is what that looks like. With that out of the way, we can then apply index of coincidence scoring. That's a lot of words, but it essentially means for ciphertext, where the information is real and not random, the score will be higher. Various real-world languages have common score thresholds, which are helpful for identifying the possible language that the decoded text was written in. Here are a few examples of that for English, German, and Kunre Shiki Romaji, the romanized form of Japanese text. Now that we've covered that, let's look at the index of coincidence for the first mural. I want to note here that this score is essentially meaningless for identifying the possible language beneath it. The sample size for the score is too small because of the length of the text. Don't worry though, I'm going to show you the score for all the murals momentarily. When we score all the murals together, we can see that it scores at 0.075. Based on what we reviewed about how languages have score thresholds, this tells me that the murals could be written in anything from Italian, Middle English, or Kunre Shiki Romaji with English words mixed in. Index of coincidence alone is not hard evidence. The reason being that you can have a text source that is mostly Romaji, for example, but once you mix in English words, the score will drop. This is important to recognize. The Sheikha tapestry, for example, demonstrates this well. Analyzing the non-English words results in a score consistent with Romaji, scored together with English words, and it drops below the Romaji score threshold. With all of that preamble out of the way, Let's talk about the total score for all the Zonai texts that we've cataloged so far. As you can see, we have a score of 0.075, which is very consistent with what we saw in the murals alone. Using this information, we were able to try out many different kinds of substitutions for our ciphertext. To date, we've tried English, Romaji, and we've even gone off the rails to try pure kind of substitution. Because the score is staying consistent, it may be worth it to examine the possibility that Latin was used. But we aren't there quite yet. I also want to take a moment and voice an opinion that runs counter to the opinion of the larger, dedicated communities. Most have resigned to the idea that the text is gibberish. While it's possible that Nintendo created a very convincing fake language, index of coincidence scoring is also hard to trick from the perspective that if it were random, we would see a much lower score. The science simply doesn't agree with the opinion that it is gibberish. To illustrate, I've replaced the first mural with random letters, and I've rescored it. The original score for the first mural alone was incredibly high, and now we can see that purely random letters is much lower. Now that we've covered basic analysis techniques, we're ready to dive into our findings in the next part. If you've stuck it out thus far, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more of this kind of content, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below.